Hello, um, my name is Redbird, and um, I'm a native to California. I'm Pomo, Paiute, Wailaki, and Wintu. And most most of those are Northern California tribes. So I've been for a long time. I've been learning about um, how to interact with nature and how to, how to take care of the land, and and learning about the uh, traditional ways that uh, California Indians took care of the land and how they had a relationship to the land, to good relationships with the land. And um, one of the things that I've learned about is how they used fire to uh, tend to the land, how they used that as a tool. And what they, what they used was a thing called good fire. And that meant that the fire did good things and it wasn't, it was usually a what we now call cold fire too. That's that's the good fire. It's fire that just um, moves gently uh, on the land and doesn't doesn't take out you know trees or you know canopies and forests or stuff. It just stays low to the ground and the, the flame lengths are really low and and it doesn't heat up the roots or, and you know kill the plants. It just um, uh, gets rid of the duff and takes out a lot of the uh, extra uh, fuel that might otherwise build up and then lead to a bad fire. And a bad fire is when uh, the fire burns too hot and, and it kills more than we want it to kill. It kills, kills plants and kills trees and so we don't want that kind of fire. So what the native Californians uh, learned was that if they burnt, had control burns regularly, regularly, they could avoid the bad fires. And so they, um, the, the controlled fires that they did were good fires. And, it, and, it, and it's a real complicated process, you know, they, for many, hundreds and even thousands of years they practiced this way of burning and they learned a lot of different ways to do it like different ecosystems require different types of fire and, and different uh, different plants require different types of fire depending on what they wanted to use it for or sometimes sometimes you just want to clear the land or sometimes you want to uh, um, stimulate certain plants to grow or sometimes you want to uh, just clear away the tough. It's all these different things that you could use the fire for. And what, what they would do, they would use it in a, what I call it in a surgical way where they would just put, put a fire here, put a fire there and or at this time of year or that time of year, just, just all these different things they had to learn. Um, and the, the reason they have to do that, because here in California, uh, fire is going to happen. You know, whether whether we do it purposely or not, it, it's going to happen one way or the other. And if we don't control it, it's likely to, to be out of control fire and cause a lot more damage. So we try to avoid that. We want to try to avoid that. In uh Especially in more recent times, more people are listening and, and uh, looking to native people to uh, see how they did it. And because we've been talking about fire for a long time, and sometimes people listen, sometimes they don't. But now more people are listening just because we've had those catastro catastrophic fires in California. So, so what what can uh, what can people take from that in modern times? What, what can we do? What can, how can we use their knowledge, the, like the traditional knowledge? How can we use it today? That's, that's the big question uh, that a lot of people have. Uh, and Native people do have to answers. A lot of us have answers for that. You know, one thing is to, to uh, dive deep in, into that and learn all, all there is to learn about um, putting fire on the land and it's a, a practice that takes takes a lot of training 
you can't just run out run out into the woods or run out into your backyard and start a fire don't do that nobody do that you, you have to do it with uh with knowledge and care and and, and any fire that's going to be lit there has to be a burn boss somebody who's gonna somebody who has knowledge is somebody who knows what to do and when to do it and where to do it and there are people uh, in these times that are learning that and becoming burn bosses so what what we need to do is um, train people up and in, 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 in the old times when people were taking care of California you know was it was a lot of people doing a lot of small burns all the time and if we want to have any type of uh, return to that uh, balanced way we will have to do that too have a lot of people doing a lot of fire burning a lot of controlled burns all the time everywhere and in order to do that a lot of people need to be trained up so uh, that's what we need to do, and there, there, and there are people these days that are giving those trainings and training as many people as they can, and having as much fires as they can. Uh, usually, they'll they'll tell you that um, there's only a certain amount of time when you could do controlled burns, you know, out of the fire season when when the humidity's higher and the ground is um, more moist. You know, that's when you would want to have a fire. Uh, but if you have a burn boss that you can talk to, they can tell you when and where to have a fire. Cause there's and cause there's especially times not to have a fire, so everybody should know that if anybody who's learning about the this this practice, they need to learn when not to burn, because there's definitely times when you should not burn, and that's what um, beginners might not know. So uh, any beginners should not try to have a fire. Another thing that, uh, to learn that people can learn about is, or might be curious about is why do we, what else, what are the other reasons for, for having a fire? You know, there's a lot of reasons. Fire does a lot of things. Um, it, help, it helps the land, it helps the soil, you know, re re recycles nutrients into the soil. It uh, helps to conserve water. It's like the overly aggressive plants that usually move in to, to areas. If you burn those away, then they're not sucking water out of the ground. So there's more water staying in the soil. Um, what else does it do? It also um, beats back the aggressive plants to give the lesser, the less aggressive plants a chance to grow. So. Um, it diversifies the uh, ecosystem. Um, it it um, levels the playing field for all the plants, so you can cultivate whichever plant you want. Like what after a fire, then you can decide. Okay, now I want this plant to burn here or that plant. Um, after after all the aggressive ones are uh, pushed back a little bit. It opens up the landscape, and like for the oak trees, like different different ecosystems need to be burned differently. Like the oak savanna, you'd burn that a certain way. You would burn that so that uh, it would help the oak tree. If you wanted the oak tree to produce a lot of acorns, you would do a certain type of burn in that area. Like burn away the dove, and then you're also burning away uh, pathogens that that would get into the oaks or get into the acorns and or or into the, the bark of the tree. Uh, so fire is good for that, just cleaning out, keeping things uh, clean, uh, so the plants and plants are healthy. It's uh, it um, it also helps help us helps us to continue our relationship with the land. It's important for native people and all people who are living in California to continue having a relationship with the land and part of that relationship involves fire so we need to have fire to continue those relationships cultural relationships and community relationships are all uh, 
intertwined with fire. So what we want to do is you have to uh, consult your local burn boss and their local fire department and and arrange to burn you at the right time of year when it when it's safe. You know, there's no wind and uh, high humidity and all those kind of things. If all those things are happening, then you, you could have a burn. You, and you need your burn boss. Everybody needs a burn boss. So what we need to do, but just the last thing I want to say is that uh, um, we need to make a big push to um, educating burn bosses because we need to educate them and spread them all across the state so they could uh, lead, lead the uh, fires everywhere. So thanks for listening. Learn more about fire and uh, go and um, foster and cultivate those uh, close relationships with the land out there. And your state parks is a good place to do that. Become familiar with the plants out there, your native plants in our state parks.